friends. Thanks for sitting down with me today. I uh, might want to grab a drink because we're going to be chilling. We're going to be talking about backpacking. It's probably my favorite thing in the world besides hanging out with my kids. So stories are going to come out. We're going to talk about gear and kind of I just want to start with how I got into backpacking. Um, I got back I got into backpacking by chance from one of my really good friends, Nicole Olney. We were doing CrossFit together. Whoop. CrossFit, CrossFit. And I actually was doing Olympic weightlifting. I got pretty serious into that. Really loved it, but my body did not. And I ended up getting a bulging disc in my back. Yeah, bulging disc in my back. So it's no joke. I was pretty injured and definitely depressed as I couldn't lift weights. I had found like a really love for the sport of Olympic weightlifting, particularly snatching. And my weakness was clean and jerk because of, again, my body positions and um, the sports that I'd done before, gymnastics and pole vaulting. Well, my body just didn't really like lifting those weights in those certain positions. And so anyways, I was pretty injured. Um, I didn't really know how to express myself physically when you have an injury and you can't do the thing that you love to do, right? I'm sure you guys have felt something like that in your life. Um, pretty lost as far as what am I gonna do physically? Um, how am I gonna feel like an athlete? Have that drive and you know, it's what makes me me is sports and, and like pushing myself. So. I didn't have any of that for a while, um, but I was rehabbing my back, trying to make it better. And over a few months time, I figured out like, literally the only thing that didn't hurt it was to hike. And I figured that out after my friend Nicole invited me to start training for Mount Whitney. Yeah, the tallest mountain in the continuous United States. At 14,503, I believe, so a 14 er, the tallest mountain in the United States, no big deal. You know, you're just coming off of uh, a bulged disc in your back and have never done anything <laughs> cardio related in your life. You just like to lift weights. But yeah, if that's something that didn't hurt my back and I saw it as a really big challenge and something to work towards, I was into it. So, I mean, Thank you, Nicole, for showing me hiking and training for something completely different than I had ever done before. And so that's how I really got into hiking was by chance. I didn't really want to. Um, I wanted to be an Olympic weightlifter, not meaning like I wanted to go to the Olympics. The Olympic weightlifting is that you do snatch and clean and jerk. But I wanted to be a competitive and the best that I could be in Olympic weightlifting. Hiking was never really like on my, ooh, I'd love to hike these mountains, but that's how life happens. I fell into hiking because of some really great people and it didn't hurt my back. And it was really therapeutic for me, both physically and mentally. So woo, like, I'm gonna be a hiker. We're gonna climb Mount Whitney. And I think it was like six months of training and Nicole, and crew decided that we were gonna train by doing the six pack of peaks, which is six big mountains in San Bernardino County. And like highly recommended if you ever wanna climb Mount Whitney is that you do the six, six pack of peaks and living in San Diego, it's totally doable. Um, so we do the first hike, I believe it was the first hike. Oh yes, it was, okay. So we do the first hike, which was Mount Baldy and oh i struggled if you guys have done mount baldy there's like the i think it's called i don't know the ski trail or the to the ski hut but it's basically a slope that you just basically climb straight up and it really felt straight up i was really out of shape um again i had just been lifting weights basically for the last two years no cardio. I was really strong, but I didn't have like the cardiovascular endurance. So we climbed Mount Baldy, made it to the top and everything. And on our drive home, I kind of break down. I cry in front of Nicole. I forget who else was in the car, but I'm crying. I'm like, dude, this was Mount Baldy. It's, 
I don't even remember now. How how many miles is Mount Baldy? Like nine miles? I don't know. And in my mind, like nowhere near as hard as Mount Whitney was gonna be. And I was like, if I'm struggling this much on Mount Baldy, there's no way that I'm gonna be ready for Mount Whitney in five or six months. So broke down and cried in front of my friends and they're the best. They're like, you did good, of course. Um, we have so much time to train. Like, as long as you train, you're going to make it. And it gives me chills right now because that's something that I love about hiking is anybody can do it and anyone can get better at it. You just have to put the time in on the trail. You know, you see people who don't look like hikers, but they're great hikers because they just have the time on their feet. And they're just, they love being out there, so they just get out there and train. So she instilled in me that if I just did what I was supposed to do, that I would be able to complete Mount Whitney in about five or six months. Long story short, I did climb Mount Whitney in October of 2017. Oh, this is my permit. Yeah, October 15th, 2017. It was the most challenging thing in my life mentally and physically that I had ever done and that's saying a lot because I had a baby naturally so Mount Whitney is no joke um also so proud of myself and that was the first major hike that I did I mean after the initial probably month that I didn't want to see a rock again um I wanted more you know like let's go hiking I loved it I love the feeling of the journey and that's something that I just love about hiking yes I love to get to the top but for me hiking isn't just about like the summit it's the whole process of hiking the the rhythm the rhythm of it just the walking I love to walk so that's something that I didn't really know about myself until I started hiking just love to be outside walking it's like my dream job so if that could be a job so you could say that I definitely got the hiking bug and after Mount Whitney and as a group we all wanted to start getting into backpacking so we're like yeah that was really cool but that was so tough how about we do something kind of more fun and not just like a one day thing so as a whole as a cool group we got into backpacking um, and our first trip backpacking was hiking rim to rim to rim in the Grand Canyon over four days and three nights. And so that was my first taste of backpacking. And ever since then, I am hooked on backpacking. I still love hiking, but if I had to choose one, like I would rather go for um, duration rather than intensity because I really like to enjoy the journey and just be outside doing my dream job walking as much as possible the amount of happiness joy fulfillment like everything that i can think of that i aspire in my life i feel that when i'm outside when i'm hiking so especially backpacking hiking all day setting up the tent chilling at night waking up you know your purpose is you know going somewhere else somewhere new completely different and then doing it all over again like i guess i'm very simple and I just love that. So backpacking and hiking is very simple, but you have to be prepared. And um, yeah, there's very much a difference between like when you're out there, what you got to do compared to what you have to do to prepare to be out there. Being safe is absolutely number one priority. And if you're prepared, you can enjoy what you're doing. That's the same of anything in life. So preparing for these big trips, Mount Whitney, backpacking, um, Grand Canyon, and on Catalina, like you have to be very prepared. So research, totally necessary. I researched the crap out of everything that I purchased. I don't know what it is about me, but I looked at so many reviews and just, I think it's because making these purchases, probably some of the most expensive things that I've ever bought and I knew that I wanted to get good quality because something big in my life and I wanted to make a good investment 
with my money and again be super prepared for what I was going to experience out there. So um, I do feel confident in the stuff that I have. I have tested all this stuff obviously because I've had it for years and if it's helpful in any way, you know, you're just getting started in backpacking. Um, I hope that some of my opinions will help you go in the right direction of the stuff that you want. Um, the stuff has been in my closet. It's really nicely, is it nicely organized? Well, I have a specific little section in the closet for my backpacking stuff, so everything is taken care of, but it's been kind of together since my last um, backpacking trip, Catalina, which was almost a year ago, so let's take it out, see what I got, and tell you a little bit about all the stuff that I have and what I like about it and whatnot. So, um, this is, this is Big Mama. Lovingly, this is an Osprey Aura 65 AG. This is, this is my home girl. This is my dog. I love this backpack. I love carrying all my shit in a backpack, like everything I need. That's amazing to me. And this baby does the trick. I love everything about it, except for the fact that it's actually too big for me. It's a size small. Shout out if anyone is selling an extra small hit me up because I really need a new size, but I want to get the same exact backpack. I'm not going to go into like a million details about the backpack. I'm not trying to like pretend like I'm an expert on backpacks or anything like that, but um, just kind of show you how I do it and maybe that's why I like it. So I like to keep all my sleeping stuff in the bottom. I'm pretty sure I learned that from Nicole too. So all my sleeping stuff goes in the bottom and it keeps separate from everything else and it has a nice nice pocket for that. Your tent can easily be on the outside by these straps. So let's, you'll be able to see better if I zip this up. So if my sleeping stuff is down there and then I'm going to hook up my tent right here all right so my tent will be on the outside here the mesh pocket is really convenient for grabbing like a layer um, an extra layer or something that you need to grab out real quick that can also just be stuffed so it's kind of like a stuff pocket um, the side pockets are fine I mean, just for organization, they're important. Looking pretty now. The side mesh is really cool because it has two openings. So it has one right here and one right here. And when you have your water bottle back there, like sometimes it makes sense to pull it out on an angle like this rather than like, so side pockets are pretty cool. This has a detachable brain. So this part actually comes off if you don't need the extra, you know, however much storage this is. Don't need this, it comes off. Basically like a big stuff sack with an internal bladder compartment. And top sack has a couple compartments in it, a couple separate compartments. So obviously you put stuff in there that you wanna get to like camera, um, snacks, which brings me to my favorite snack pockets right here on the waist. Has two pockets, snack pockets. You put things in there that you want to eat while you're hiking so you can have easy access to them. Just seeing if there's any treats in here. There's a quarter. Okay, there's a quarter. Obviously great design, you know, airflow with all the strappy strappies, bungees for extra things. Oh, something that I didn't know about my pack until I watched the YouTube, like about it. I guess that's something that I wanna say, like anything that you get, you need to learn about it. You need to be a student of it. So any pack that you get, any equipment, you wanna learn as much as you can about it so that you know how to use it properly. Um, so, on the chest strap right here, you can see 
see that, there's actually a little emergency whistle. There we go, that was loud. So emergency whistle right here on the chest strap. And like, that's something I would have never known if I didn't watch the YouTube video, because it's hard to tell. So that is my favorite hiking backpack. I love this thing. My other backpack is my day hike slash, could be overnighter backpack. It's a duder, duder. This is a huge upgrade for me. And I like everything about this backpack so far. I like the waist straps are mesh so that you don't get all sweaty right there. It has ample and convenient pockets. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but I'm gonna take this opportunity to show off my um, bag flare. These are my awesome pins. Hopefully you can see them. It says go to the F outside, and this is my Grand Canyon pin. It's upside down. So these are my pins. It's a little flare. Yeah. So it has an internal water bladder, you know, standard, standard stuff. Really like it. It's pretty too. I guess I like green backpacks. Let's see. These are really convenient. They're little stuff sacks, see to summit bags. Big thing for packing your bag for backpacking is organization. I'm sure you can imagine that at the end of a long day hiking 20 miles, you don't wanna be looking for something that should be where it should be. So organizing your stuff, this red bag is actually my food bag. So currently, what I have in here, I have my jet boil. Love my jet boils, how I heat up water for food, for coffee. So that's gonna be in my bag. Ah, I still have a mountain house in here. It's Italian style pepper steak, awesome. Fuel and extra fuel. Always wanna have extra fuel fuel for your jet boil. So, fuel. A little coffee, pour over coffee. So this is my food bag. When I'm backpacking, this one becomes my clothes bag waterproof it's sea to summit 15 liters so i think the other one was 15 liters too 15 liters is a really good um, general size for these stuff sacks that that people use um so yeah it's usually in my clothes bag right now it has my backpack rain cover something i did not have on my first backpacking trip to the grand canyon and we use trash bags and got in a snowstorm. I was wearing shorts. So, yes, I've become more prepared since then. It's all about learning. Platypus water bottles, one liter. One liter is good, but the actual flexibility has proved not to be super helpful, like when you're trying to grab it and stuff it back in. Um, a smart water bottle, that's one liter, a plastic one, is actually more convenient than this, but I got it. It's an emergency, is it poncho, emergency poncho. This is something new that I have not tried out. I was doing laundry and got this nice poof of why can't I think of the name? Oh, nice poof of lint, but this will help start a fire. And I've not tried out that theory, but I have it. It's really light, that's important. My camp cup. I actually have two camp cups. This one's more purpose, uh, more functional. Lots of good coffee in there. I get I like to get memorabilia from everywhere that I go, so patches are pretty cool. Badges of honor. Um, Grand Canyon, Grand Canyon, and the TCT Trans Catalina Trail. It's a cute one. So my patches are just waiting. 
for me to use them. Cool aviators. These are sweet because they fit under a brimmed hat, which is something you wouldn't think of. So low profile brimmed hat aviators. I keep them in here because I literally only wear them for backpacking. So I like to make sure that I have what I need when I want to go. Repurpose my sleeping pad bag as my toiletry sack. So that's cute. Standard toiletries. I wear contacts, so contact case. Um, blah, blah, blah. Standard toiletries. But these are cool. These are the body wipe. This is the shower that I like to take in my tent when I'm done with the day. Start with the face, and then go everywhere, and then pack it out. So the body wipe, that's the shower. Regular old toiletries. What are these things called, paracord? Yeah, this is something I bought early on when I wanted to be, no, I just said that, when I wanted to be a hiker, pretty much, because I don't know if any like real hikers wear these, but I thought it looked cool. I'm like, yeah. I'm a hiker. I know it's for emergencies and it will be super good to have cord for something, but I don't know if anyone actually wears it or they just pack it. So anyways, that's a paracord bracelet. That's it for that. More body wipes. Selfie stick. I love to make videos. So that thing's sweet. Yeah. Selfie stick. Always got to pack that. Who cares about the weight? Portable charger. Ooh, very necessary. This is an anchor. I upgraded to this big one um, before the last backpacking trip. This is your portable battery. Basically, charge your phone, any devices, GPS. Well, I don't know how. I mean, you hook up to your watch whatever because it has the USBs you need this make sure that it's fully charged before you leave so that's a huge upgrade I used to have one that was like I think this one was like 40 or 50 bucks the other one was like 20 and it only really worked for like one charge this will charge like four or five times some random Random shiz, not too exciting. Headlamp. Eh. This is my Sawyer Mini. This is a water filtration system. Um, I keep it, you know, together, organized. That's important. A little pump in the bag. In Grand Canyon, we did use this. It's pretty cool. Got water every day from the Colorado River. It was freezing and amazing. And so, yeah, we had to filter our water from this basically into that smart water bottle, one liter, and then from the water bottle, put it in our um, camelback thingy. So, yeah, it was a process, but a uh, Sawyer water filter mini is super cool. Aqua tabs for emergencies. straw. Use all the water stuff. Uh, bug spray. I've only used that the last time hiking. On probably my backpacking trips I decide to get rid of it because it's 3.4 ounces and I'm like that stuff matters when you're backpacking. You're like nope don't want to carry 3.4 ounces. Ooh, this is my memory. This is my toilet to go bag. This is from Mount Whitney. Of course you have to take one of these when you go to Mount Whitney because you can't obviously go anywhere. Some people do, it's disgusting and no one should ever do that. Pack it in, pack it out, same with your waist. Didn't use this one, used many others, but didn't use this one. Altitude will do something to your stomach, so be prepared for that. I am proud to say that I did take a poop on the top of Mount Whitney. Of course, in a bag, but how many people can say that? You know, you gotta go, you gotta go. Things are happening with the elevation. Any 
anyways, long story short, this is a toilet toilet to go. Still got one. First aid kit, absolutely necessary. A lot of little stuff in there. Probably need an update of this, actually. My first aid kit could definitely be better. So that's something I need to work on. This is my best friend when I'm hiking. It's KT tape, kinesio tape, it's stretchy tape that I use to tape up my feet and my ankles. Um, my ankles are really weak from all the times that I've rolled them, I think in gymnastics. So this offers the stability because I started wearing trail running shoes. Um, much bigger fan of trail running shoes than hiking boots for backpacking when the terrain allows because of the comfortability of them. But if I take my ankles and I have my trail running shoes, I get the best of both worlds. So this is definitely a necessary. These are my trail running shoes. These are my third pair of the same shoes. Yeah, I'm definitely a fan. I've never done that before with any kind of shoes or anything. So third pair, same shoes. I think the first ones were a different color, but these are Innovates Rock Light. I think it's 305. Really, really big fan. Oh yeah, Rock Light 305. Really big fan of these trail running shoes. These are my third pair. Like I said, love them. Wouldn't do it without them. But I do have boots. I think, yeah, I climb Mount Whitney in boots. Mount Whitney is really rocky, so I don't know if I would just wear trail running shoes if I did Mount Whitney again. So I have these cool boots, a new, they're very comfortable. Um, I like these too, but they're comfortable for boots, just not as comfortable as trail running shoes. Probably literally the only thing that I've replaced is my hiking poles and they're totally my fault. I <laughs> was climbing Mount Gorgonio with my really good friend, Randy. I was really tired. If you ever climb Mount Gorgonio, you know that. It was really hard. So I was really tired at the end and I wasn't needing my poles. So I just, you know, have my arms in it like this. And I was just dragging them behind me, drag, drag, drag. And the tip got stuck in a rock and I was walking and it actually broke the pole. Um, I was about like a quarter mile from the top. Luckily when I got up there, I had gear tape and I was able to wrap it back up. And that stuff worked amazing, get back down and then I'd replace my poles. They're nothing special, but they work. Just Costco, Cascade Mountain, they're fine. Oh, I just said I didn't replace anything. I lost my first microfiber towel after the third time I climbed Mount Baldy. I camped on there at the top overnight by myself and oh yeah. So I dropped my bag down and it was laying on the little piece where you drink from, from the camelback. And so putting the pressure on that piece, water. And the entire bottom of my tent a real wake up call you always got to be on your toes when you're by yourself your survival is in your own hands so I used my microfiber towel was really happy I had one laid it out soaked it up readjusted my plans for the next day because I had way less water you know re readjusted my dinner and all that kind of stuff to account for the loss of water um, on the way down I had it tied to my backpack like on the top or whatever I was just charging down and I lost it somewhere. So I feel really bad about, you know, getting trash out there. Anyways, I have a new microfiber towel. I have a machete. I've backpacked by myself a few times and I don't think I would bring this backpacking, but I bring it camping because, you know, weight's not an issue, but it's my machete. Use it for nothing yet. I've never used it, but it's pretty cool. And I would use it if I needed to. And I sleep with it by my head when I'm camping. So. Uh, lastly, it's my love.
lovely sleeping bag. I love my sleeping bag. This is a, this is a Kelty sleeping bag. And I keep it hung up because I learned that's what you're supposed to do. So this is a Kelty sleeping bag. And it's a mummy bag. But it also... I don't know. I'm really weird about sleeping in a mummy bag. So this one doesn't feel too constricting. Like maybe it's not really narrow or whatnot. But I like this sleeping bag, Kelty. And I believe it's like a, a third rated 30. Let's see. Kelty Cosmic Down. It's rated 19 degrees. So I have gotten hot camping like in the summer, but in the winter it's really nice. I'd like to get a less heavy bag for kind of like all purpose because I sleep hot too. So, I mean, this bag might be really good for someone who doesn't sleep hot. 19 degrees, but I think more like 30 is probably better for all purpose, all season. But I love it. Dang it, I didn't want to unfold that. But this is my sleeping pad. It's a Climate Static V2. It's pretty good. It had great reviews. Um, I do kind of feel like there might be something better just because I like it, but I don't know. Maybe there's something better or maybe it just sucks to sleep on the ground. So I don't know. No way around it, but I'm pretty happy with it for the price and everything like that. I keep it folded after I learned this from Nicole too. So I don't keep it in the bag, I keep it folded. It creates more room when you combine it with your sleeping stuff. So let's fold it up. This, this baby, this is my diva pillow. If there's one thing that I splurged on, it was definitely this pillow. This is the Nemo pillow and it has um, memory foam in it. Yeah, doesn't it just, look nice like a regular pillow definitely a pillow person a little memory foam a little soft cloth i love this pillow blow it up like normal and that little touch of memory foam totally worth your comfort stuff it in the top of the mummy sack so it doesn't move um, very happy with this pillow highly recommend it i love it you may have noticed that i haven't showed you a tent it's because i don't have one Thank you to my friends who have allowed me to borrow their tents for my backpacking and camping. Um, tents are definitely expensive and I just haven't committed to which one I want for sure. But the REI Half Dome 2, that's the one that I like usually borrow from my friends. And I really like that tent. It's enough size. I don't really favor the coffin tents. It creeps me out. So the Half Dome 2, um, Enough room for you, your stuff, roomy, that one's really cool. Maybe I'll get that tent. Lastly, what you wear is really important for your preparedness. Obviously, it's going to depend on what you're doing. Um, hiking pants, I'm wearing my favorites. They're the North Face. They're like leggings, but they have lots of pockets. And I just found these before my last backpacking trips. What I like about them is that my cell phone can actually fit in this pocket. So whoop, cell phone, pretty sweet. Has pockets down here, here, here. A nice little booty. Pockets back here, they stretch, they're water resistant. They're not completely like waterproof, but they're water resistant and they feel like leggings, but they have like the extra pockets, functional pockets and water resistant. Socks are super important. I like smart wool. I have lots of pairs of smart wool socks. North Face Thermal Blast. I think that's called. No, Thermal Ball. Um, puffy. So that's my puffy. Just your, you know, UPF 50 hat. I usually wear that when I'm out. Um, a buff when we need it. Gloves. Um beanies. I also have a North Face rain jacket, windbreaker. That's come in handy a lot. I think that's it. Can I even say that? I think that's it. That was a lot of stuff. But this is what I've accumulated over four years when I started hiking. It's changed my life. I can't see myself not hiking. In the mountains, they just have capacity, like 
unlimited amount of capacity and whatever we can bring to it, that's what we can bring at that time. So if a local trail is what you want to do, it's there. If you want to train for a 14er, a Mount Whitney, a backpacking trip, like it's there. It's ready for us to take it. You just have to be prepared and, um, you know, kind of at that phase in your life where that thing is calling you. And it's definitely calling me. It's called me for four years and it continues to evolve like the ways that it calls me. Like I said, I, I really was drawn to kind of the personal test of could I climb Mount Whitney? And once I got through that, it's more just like enjoy the process, enjoy the journey, the top's great or the end's great or whatever, but just who you're doing it with, who you are when you're doing it, that's really cool to me and something that I love to share. So if you guys have any questions on my gear or wanna talk more about hiking, um, just leave, leave a comment below and we'll chat. And happy trails to you guys, be well. Wait for your time to get out there right now, it's coming, prepare. Go through your own backpacking stuff, start researching what you might want, um, how you need to train for the plan that you have and all that stuff. And if you wanna shoot some ideas to me, we'll go back and forth about it, just leave me some comments and we'll talk about it, okay? Bye.